A good finally Friday to you. Thanks so much for jumping on here on News Nation. Now I am Aaron Nolan coming to you from Chicago, but we are a brand new national newscast that you can watch at any time right here on News Nation now. Plus, you can join us tonight on WGN America, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock Central. Hey, this is one of the hottest stories among all of our stations across the country. More than 100 Nexstar affiliate stations across the country. This one's the hot one you can see on your screen. We're talking about space. What are you doing on December 21st? Because the Christmas star, as it's called, will be appearing in our sky. To help me kind of break this down, explain why it's happening, explain how you can watch it the best, we've got an astrophysicist from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. She's the deputy project scientist for the James Webb Space Telescope. My friend, Amber Strawn, Dr. Strawn, thank you so much for joining us. All right, Amber, we're, we're talking about 800 years ago. That was 1226, the last time this happened. The Christmas star. Explain to us what's happening, why it's happening, and how it's happening. Yeah, so the, what's happening basically is our two biggest planets in the solar system, Jupiter and Saturn, are going to be lined up really, really close in the sky as we view it here on Earth. Um, and yeah, like you said, closer than has happened in almost 800 years. It's going to be remarkable. What were you doing back in 1226? How did we know that the Christmas star was around in 1226? <laughs> well, I wasn't around. I don't think <laughs> your viewers were around. Um, but, but the thing is that the, the solar system works like clockwork. And so uh, we can track how the planets move in the sky. And from that, we can sort of run the clock backward, as it were, and figure out how long ago the planets were lined up like this. And so really to understand what's going on here, you can sort of imagine yourself getting in a little spaceship and, and going up above the solar system so that you're viewing the solar system from above. So from that vantage point, of course, you have the sun, the Earth, and then the outer planets. And all the planets orbit the sun at a different speed. And so at any one time, you know, you have the Earth here, maybe Jupiter's here, and Saturn's over here. So from our vantage point, they may be really far apart in the sky. What's happening later this month is you have the Earth and Jupiter and Saturn all lined up in a straight line. And so now get back in your spaceship, come back to Earth. When we look out, uh, towards the, it'll be towards the horizon this year, Jupiter and Saturn are going to be super, super, super close together. It's going to be spectacular. What's the best way to view this, Amber? Uh, a lot of people, look, we've joked about 2020 being the worst year ever, the longest year ever, and we need a little hope, and maybe some of these celestial beings can give us some hope. What's the best way for us to view it? So the best way to view it is, um, again, the, the close conjunction, as we as astronomers call it, the conjunction, when they're closest together, is going to happen on December 21st. That's the winter solstice. It's a complete coincidence that it happens to fall on the winter solstice. Um, but go outside on the 21st and right after sunset, um, so, you know, around dusk up to, you know, about an hour after sunset, and look very close to the horizon. Uh, looking sort of west southwest, and you can't miss it. Uh, it the pla uh, the planets Jupiter and Saturn will be the brightest points in the sky. And again, the cool thing about this, the really unusual thing, is how close together they're going to be. You only have a short period of time to catch it, and that'll be you know about the hour after sunset. All right, uh, astrophysicist from NASA, Amber Strawn joins us now. We are live on Facebook across the country. If you've got any questions for Amber, you can ask us there on Facebook. I'll relay them to Amber as we talk about this. Uh, Amber, we said almost 800 years ago, for you, you said it lines up like clockwork, but it's still gotta be special to see these opportunities present themselves during your lifetime. Talk about that clock and when you circle it on your calendar going, okay, this was 1226, it's 2020 now. I'm going to get to witness this. Yeah, so it, this real this really is a once in a lifetime occurrence. Um, the the planets line up fairly close together, Jupiter and Saturn, about every 20 years, but um, that they they haven't been this close together, like you said, in in 800 years. And so um, the the next time they'll be this close together, and even not quite this close, will be about 60 years from now. So for those of us that will get to witness this event, it will, it'll be the only time we do, uh, most likely. So, um, so yeah, it's just a great chance to go out and witness something beautiful and spectacular and once in a lifetime. 
And yeah, as you mentioned, this has been this has been a rough year for a lot of us. Twenty twenty uh, has been the best. Um, but uh, I, I think it's I think it's great that we get this this beautiful once in a lifetime celestial event to sort of cap off this this tumultuous year. Do we need a telescope, or will we just be able to walk out and look in that direction and see it with our eyes? The great thing about this is you don't need a telescope. You can see it with your own eyes, and um, the the planets are going to be so close together that they're they're only going to be separated by a teeny tiny bit. Uh, so it'll be about the width of a dime held at arm's length. So they're going to be incredibly close together, much closer together than the full moon appears on the sky. So you don't need a telescope to see it. But if you do have a telescope, even a small telescope or binoculars, definitely point them at, at this conjunction because it's going to be awesome. You'll get to see both planets and some of their moons in one field of view of the telescope. So that almost never happens. Uh, so this this will be a, a great time to, to pull out your binoculars and telescopes as well. But you don't need them. It'll be spectacular even just with your eyes. What's the excitement level right now at NASA? And, and you work with the James Webb Space Telescope, so you're around telescopes, you're around looking at things in the sky. But there still has to be some excitement about this specific moment moment, December 21st, where we get to see this. Yeah, uh, yeah, there is. I mean, because most astronomers, well, I, I guess I should say, me as an astronomer, I use telescopes in space, like the Hubble Space Telescope, and some of the bigger telescopes on the ground to view things that are very, very far away. But almost all of us astronomers, you know, at heart, uh, we still love the night sky, just to go out and look up at the night sky. Um, I grew up in rural Arkansas, middle of nowhere, and the reason I became an astronomer, astronomer was because that, that night sky was so beautiful. So I was captivated by the rural night sky as a young kid. Uh, and so, so most of us hold the night sky close to our hearts <laughs> uh, as astronomers now, even though a lot of what we're looking at requires telescopes. All right, if you're just now joining us here on News Nation Now, we are across the country live on Facebook and our website, joined by Amber Strawn, who is an astrophysicist at NASA. Amber, talking about the Christmas star, and I know you guys work with calendars, you work with, like you said, this, this happens ever so often, but the special moment is still here, and the hope that it provides, and, and, and you know, I don't, I don't know if you want to dive into the hope that it provides. You mentioned how bad 2020 has been for a lot of us. But there is a hope that we have something that is called the Bethlehem Star or this, the Christmas Star that's right in front of us this year. Absolutely. I mean, I think humans for centuries have, have derived a sense of, of hope and wonder from the night sky. And this event just happens to be, you know, this, this really special event, once in a lifetime sort of thing, where we can, again, we can... We can go outside, we can look up at the sky, we can look at the, the wonder and the beauty of the universe. And it, it sort of helps to remind us that, you know, there's there's more out there. And as rough a time as we might be having, that there there is, you know, the, the universe is beautiful. Mm. Uh, there's, there's huge possibilities. And for me, it does give me a sense of hope, a sense of really knowing that, that you know, we're, we're one little planet in, in one little solar system, which on one hand might seem lonely, but on the other hand, it's just, you know, it's remarkable to think about the scale of the universe and really just the beauty of the universe. All right, so we've got some questions we're going to ask you now from Facebook. Trudy on News Nation Now's Facebook page asks, will this reoccur in another 800 years? So the, the lining up of the three planets of Earth, Jupiter, and Saturn, um, actually happens about every 20 years. Um, so it's rare in any sense, but about every 20 years, the planets line up in a straight line so that from the vantage point of Earth, you see them very close together. Now, there are other things coming into play here, like the tilt of the, um, the orbital plane that the planets are in. So um, all those things come into play to make, to make the differences in how close together they look. Um, but it's every 20 year cycle that, that the planets appear pretty close together. Um, this year just happens to be a, an exception, again, based on those sort of different, different orbital mechanics that cause it to be so very close together. Yeah, you know, you were talking about orbital mechanics, and I'm going, okay, I have no idea what that is, but it's cool. So I'll go with that, Amber. Uh, we've got some more questions coming in. I uh, want you to touch on what day this is happening and what time this is happening this year. Yeah, so this is happening on December 21st, and you will only be able to see it for uh, just about an hour after sunset. 
So my advice is to go outside on December 21st at sunset, um, just as the sun sets, and as the sky starts to get darker, you'll see the planets. Um, it'll be very close to the horizon, so you'll need to go somewhere where you don't have you know, trees or buildings obstructing your view, somewhere where you have a clear view of the horizon. And look, uh, look, uh, you know, west, southwest, and pretty soon, uh, once uh, it starts to get dark, you'll see uh, the, the two bright points of light, and those bright points will be Jupiter and Saturn. Now, December 21st is the date that they get closest together, but you don't have to wait till then to see these planets. You can go out tonight or any night you have a clear night and look in towards the western sky just after sunset, and those two bright, what look like stars, are the planets. And over the course of the next three weeks, you'll notice they get closer and closer and closer together. Uh, and it's on December 21st that they get the closest, uh, but it's going to be a spectacular view for the next three weeks leading up to that. And then, of course, after December 21st, they'll start to sort of drift apart again. That is, it's really cool how the timing all works and the irony that it is on the winter solstice this year uh, is amazing. Uh, th Steve, thank you for that question. Cynthia is switching over to the moon, Amber, so let's talk about the moon for a moment. Uh, it seems like for Cynthia that the moon has been out almost every day this year from what we've seen. Is that something unique to what's happening right now? Or again, is that just coincidence that Cynthia is able to see the moon? Yeah, so that's, um, that's, that's just coincidence. Uh, the moon, of course, go, undergoes its uh, uh, phases on over, over the course of 28 days, over the course of about a month. Um, and so you can see the moon in its, all its various shapes over the course of a month, from the full moon to uh, all the way to the new moon and then back again. Yeah, Another well, I, cool thing um, happening this month uh, in December is the Gemini's meteor shower. And uh, talking about the moon reminded me of that because that event happens on the night of December 13th is when it peaks. And that's during the new moon, which means you don't see the moon in the night sky. And so it'll be a great night to go out and catch some meteors that night. Well, I love that we're talking about all this. And true story, Amber, I did not prompt her to do this, but my daughter today filled out a Santa list for school. Telescope was number one on her list. So I'm a pretty proud dad today. I love it. That's great. I hope Santa brings her a telescope. <laughs> all right, we're going we're gonna to get back to the top and talk about the Christmas star in just a moment. But I want to talk about the James Webb Space Telescope. You're the deputy project scientist for at NASA. Uh, this is kind of a, a partner to the Hubble telescope. Explain the relationship there and what we're hoping to find with this new gigantic telescope that you're such an integral part of. Yeah, so obviously the Hubble, tel Hubble Space Telescope has been a remarkable uh, machine, this wonderful thing that's just revealed the cosmos to us for 30 years now. It's been in space for 30 years. Um, and as amazing as it is, and, and it's still, still doing a great job, uh, but as amazing as it is, there's a lot of ways that we've sort of pushed it to its limits. And so for the past almost 20 years, we've been thinking of and dreaming of and building the next huge space telescope that will really be the scientific successor to Hubble. And that is the James Webb Space Telescope. And um, we've been working on it so hard for, for years and years. And the awesome news is, is that it launches next year. Uh, so we're super excited about it, and um, we're going to learn, I believe, just incredible things about the universe from this awesome new James Webb Space Telescope. I don't know if my boss is watching right now, but Jen Lines, if you're watching, I'm going to go to the launch of this telescope, and Amber, you and I are going to sit there and watch it together. <laughs> well, it's launching from South America, um, and so uh, won't be as many people get to go to the launch, but we are already planning, we at NASA are already planning uh, nationwide, worldwide launch party so that as many people that want to, to watch it sort of online and join in uh, on the fun will we'll get to, to enjoy the launch of this telescope. And then about six months after it launches, because we're launching it out into deep space, far away, yeah. uh, about four times further away than the moon. Um, and so it takes a while to get out to that part of space. So it'll be about six months after launch that we'll get back these spectacular images from this telescope. Uh, no doubt. It, it is an exciting time, uh, not only in my family, because my daughter is obsessed with the moon and she's asking for Santa to bring a telescope, which he will, Amber. I promise you that is going to happen. 
Um, but we're also seeing what we haven't seen in nearly 800 years, the Christmas star, the star of Bethlehem, as it's called, Jupiter and Saturn, getting really close together for our naked eye to be able to see. Amber Strawn is joining us now from NASA. Amber, for those of us uh, who maybe are just now joining us on this, on Facebook Live and NewsNationNow.com, let's kind of talk about, again, how this is happening and why this is happening as the Christmas star will become visible December 21st. Yeah, well, yeah, circle circle that date on your calendars, December 21st, and go outside that night um, if you have clear skies. Uh, find a place that you have a clear view of the horizon, of the western horizon. So you're going to go outside, find a clear view, look to the west, southwest, and shortly after sunset, um, when the, just when the sky starts to get dark, you're going to see these two bright, bright points of light. Uh, very close together in the sky near the horizon. And those points of light are Jupiter and Saturn. And this is the closest together that they've been for 800 years. So it's going to be an incredible sight. I actually really like this question from John before you go, Amber. Saturn was always my favorite planet growing up. And the rings of Saturn are something that we talk about. Is it going to be close enough that with binoculars you could see the rings of Saturn for the 21st? So the, the actual planets aren't really any closer to us. Okay. They're not closer to the Earth is it, than usual. They're just close together. Um, so you, you'll probably need um, a small telescope to be able to see the rings of Saturn. But even a small telescope, you'll be able to see the rings. And the really cool thing about how close together the planets are, uh, you can see the moons of the planets as well anytime. Um, but Saturn will be closer to Jupiter than some of Jupiter's moons appear. So it'll be an incredible sight through binoculars, um, or a small telescope if you have it. Amber Strawn, thank you so much. She is a astrophysicist at NASA. Thank you for taking the time here on News Nation Now. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. All right, Amber, go get your telescope out. I know you're excited about the 24. Who am I saying? You, how many telescopes do you have? <laughs> I personally only have one telescope. Okay. Um, I'm surprised by that. Yeah, but I, I use the space telescopes that NASA puts up there for us. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a name drop, by the way, Amber. I use the space telescopes that... Okay. Appreciate you, Amber. <laughs> sure thing. Have a good one. All right. You too. Amber Strawn joining us there from NASA. And again, we were talking about this in, in a year that has been unlike any other. A lot of people like this story, not only on NewsNationNow.com. They also like it across all the different stations that you may be watching out from across the country. And we encourage you to join us coming up tonight on News Nation, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock Central on WGN America. Much more on the Christmas star, a.k.a. the star of Bethlehem that Amber was just talking about. We'll have that and all your news from across the nation on News Nation. Have a fantastic morning. We'll see you back here on News Nation now a little bit later this afternoon.